Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel Cakes by MK. So around the world people are going in and out of lockdown due to COVID and here in New Zealand we're back in lockdown again and I know it can be a little bit frustrating especially for young kids who have to be cooped up at home. So a close friend of mine, thank you Zainab, gave me the idea of doing something a little bit different. So today's video is going to be dedicated to all the young ones out there and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sharing a really easy chocolate cake recipe of mine and I'm also going to be dropping some mats and some science questions along the way for you guys to try out before you dig into your cake. And to add a little bonus, I'll also be giving away some really cool cake decorating equipment to one lucky winner here in New Zealand. So stay till the end to see how to enter the draw as well as what you could potentially win. Unfortunately, due to COVID, it made it a little bit difficult for me to do an international giveaway, but definitely still do join in the fun and I cannot wait to see what amazing cakes you will create. Stay tuned and I hope you guys enjoy this video. So before we start making our cake batter, there's two other things that we need to do first. So one is we need to turn on our oven so that it's all ready when our cake batter is done. And two, we need to prepare our cake tin so that that's ready too when our batter's all finished. Now when it comes to turning on the oven, do get an adult to help you with this. You need to turn it on to 150 degrees Celsius on fan bake. Now here is your first question. So degrees Celsius is something that we use to measure temperature. So whether something is hot or cold. Now to give you an example, when water is zero degrees Celsius, it's freezing. But when it's 100 degrees Celsius, it's boiling. So today we're gonna be baking our cake at 150 degrees Celsius. So is that really cold or is that really hot? Now once our oven is turned on, we're now ready to prepare our cake tin. So today I'm going to be showing you guys a really easy way to do this. So what I've got here is I've got an 8 inch cake tin and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some baking paper which I have cut out and I'm just going to push that into my cake tin and make sure that it's all nicely around the edges and up the sides of my cake tin. Now, if you do have some bits of your baking paper, which are really long and sticking up at the top, so like this, now mine aren't too bad, but if they're really long, then you can just cut them off using some scissors. Now, just be careful with your scissors and ask an adult to help you with this as well. Okay, and our cake tin is all ready to go now. Now, just before we get onto our cake batter, I have another question for you guys. So this cake tin that I'm using today is eight inches. And if you convert that to centimeters, that's just over 20 centimeters. So my next question for you guys is how many millimeters is 20 centimeters? So now we're ready to move on to our cake batter. Now this cake batter is really easy to put together and I've got quite a few different ingredients here. So I've got some dark chocolate, some eggs, yogurt, butter, oil and some milk. And then I've also got some flour, salt, sugar, baking soda, baking powder, cocoa powder and a little bit of instant coffee. And I'm going to be putting up a screen right now with all the different quantities that you need so you can pause the video and go ahead and grab all your ingredients. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our chocolate, milk, butter and our sugar and we're going to put that all into this big bowl and just give it a little mix. Now once that's kind of mixed together, we're going to melt it now in the microwave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my bowl into the microwave for 20 seconds. I'm going to take it out, give it a little mix and then put it back in for another 20 seconds. And I'm going to keep doing that until my mixture is really nice and smooth and it almost looks like a thick chocolate milk. Now, the reason why you don't wanna just pop your bowl into the microwave for, you know, a minute or two is because one, this might burn our chocolate, which we don't want. And 
two is that if you heat milk up too quickly, it's going to kind of rise and overflow, which we really don't want because we don't want to be cleaning up a big mess. Now, you might be wondering why milk rises like that when we heat it up. Now, basically, milk has air which is trapped in it. And when we heat up milk, that air starts to expand and it starts to become a lot bigger, which makes our milk start to kind of become a lot higher and rise up. So we want to make sure that we're not heating up our milk too quickly and making those air bubbles expand too quickly and, you know, end up, you know, kind of overflowing over our bowl, which we really don't want. So that's why we're only going to pop it in for 20 seconds at a time. Now, just make sure that you are using a microwave safe bowl and just remember to take your spoon out every time you're mixing it so that you don't accidentally put it into the microwave because you don't want to be putting metal into the microwave. Now, a quick question for you guys while I go ahead and melt this mixture. In this recipe, I'm using 180 grams of dark chocolate. If I was to double this recipe, how many grams of dark chocolate would I need? So I finished melting my ingredients in the microwave and as you can see, it's turned into this really yummy, thick chocolatey mixture. And now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change my spoon to a whisk. This is going to help beat some air into our cake mixture so that we have a nice fluffy cake. And I'm going to start off by adding my yogurt and my oil and mixing that into my cake batter. Now next I'm going to crack in my eggs one by one and give it a good mix in between each egg. Now a quick tip for you guys, if you're worried about getting eggshells into your cake batter, then simply crack your eggs in a separate bowl first, make sure that there's no eggshells in it, and then pop your egg into your cake batter and mix it through. Now once that's all nicely mixed together, I'm going to go ahead and start adding my dry ingredients to my bowl. Now I'm going to start off by adding my cocoa powder and my instant coffee first. And try not to get your bowl into your cake batter. Now once that's mixed together, I'm going to finish off by adding the rest of my dry ingredients to my bowl. So I've got my flour, baking powder, baking soda and my salt. Now the reason why we leave our dry ingredients to the end, especially our flour, is because flour has this thing called gluten in it. And when we mix flour with liquid, so in this case our chocolatey mixture which we've got here, it starts to create that gluten. And that gluten is what helps, you know, hold all our ingredients together so that our cake doesn't fall apart. But the problem is if we overmix it and we create too much gluten, then we might end up with a tough or chewy cake, which we really don't want. So we're just going to mix it in until all of our flour disappears. And just remember to pre-sift your ingredients too, so that we don't have any lumps in our cake batter. Okay, so my flour has just disappeared now, and now we're ready to pour this into our cake tin. Now once that's nicely in your cake tin, we're just going to bang our cake tin two times on our table, and this is going to help just settle our batter so that we don't have any holes when we cut through our cake when it's all done. So now we're ready to pop our cake into the oven. It's going to be baking at 150 degrees for one hour. And while it's baking away, I've got some more questions for you guys coming up.
So my cake is out of the oven now. It's been cooling in its pan for about 30 to 40 minutes. Now the reason why I've left it in there for so long is because this is a nice rich kind of mud cake. And with cakes like that, you need to really give it enough time to cool before you take it out of its pan to allow things to kind of solidify a little bit. Otherwise it might break apart. So now that it's had some time to cool, I'm going to turn it out on top of my cake stand that I've got here. You can put it onto a plate or whatever you like. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to flip my pan over and my cake should come right out. And then I'm just going to carefully take the baking paper off. Now once all the baking paper is taken off, you're left with a beautiful, rich, moist chocolate cake, which smells absolutely incredible. Now before we go and ice our cake, we need to let our cake cool down, otherwise the heat from the cake is going to melt our icing. So while our cake is cooling down, we're gonna go ahead and make our icing, which is going to be a chocolate ganache. So the chocolate ganache that we're going to be making now is what we're going to be using as the icing on our cake. Now this chocolate ganache is so easy to make and it's so super delicious and all you need to do is combine equal parts of dark chocolate to heavy cream. So what that means is basically we want the same amount of chocolate and the same amount of cream. So in this case I've got 180 grams of chocolate and then I've got 180 mils of cream. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my cream into my bowl with the chocolate in it and then we're going to melt that together in the microwave like we did with our cake batter earlier. Now just keep in mind that we only want to be putting this into the microwave for 20 seconds at a time because we don't want to overheat our cream or burn our chocolate and just make sure that you're giving it a mix in between each of those 20 seconds and just keep doing that until it's all melted. And while I am melting this away, I've got a few more questions for you guys. So my chocolate and my cream are nicely melted together now and I'm left with this beautiful silky smooth chocolate ganache. But the only problem is, is that it's a little bit too liquidy at the moment. We need it to thicken up a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit now for about 20 to 30 minutes. And what you'll notice is that it starts to become a lot thicker in texture and then it's going to be easier for us to pour over our cake once our cake has cooled down. Now what's going to happen here is our liquidy mixture is going to start to solidify as it cools down. So it's going to start turning from a liquid to a solid. Now a quick tip for you guys, if you notice that your ganache has gotten a little bit too thick while we've been waiting for our cake to cool down, you can just pop it back into the microwave for about 5 to 10 seconds and you'll notice that it becomes a little bit more liquidy again and then you can then pour it over your cake. So a quick question for you guys while we're waiting for our ganache and our cake to cool down is what is the difference between a solid and a liquid? So my cake is nice and cool now. I had it cooling for about 50 minutes or so and my ganache has thickened up really nicely as well. So if you take a closer look, it's still, you know, got some movement to it, but it's not so liquidy anymore. Now, if you do notice that, you know, your ganache is still quite liquidy and it seems like it might just fall off your cake if you pour it on top, then you can pop it into the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes and this should help just thicken it up nicely. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put all of this chocolate ganache on the top of my cake and I'm just going to use the back of my spoon to help spread it all around. And you just want to spread it out to the edge so it's almost like some of it's going to fall off the side of your cake. Now once that's nicely spread out, we're going to finish off with a bit of decorating. 
Now you guys can go ahead and decorate this cake however you like. You can put sprinkles on top, chocolate, lollies. I like to put raspberries on the top of my chocolate cake. So I've got some freeze dried raspberries here and I'm just gonna put a few around the cake and also crush some of them in my fingers and just sprinkle that on my cake as well. And then once you finish decorating, your chocolate cake is all done. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut a slice and we're going to see what the inside looks like. So I've just cut into the cake and it smells so good. I cannot wait for you guys to try yours. So just before we finish, I have one more question for you guys. So if a quarter of this cake can give me two slices of cake, how many slices of cake can I get out of this entire cake? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're based in New Zealand, then you can also go in the drawer to win some beginner's cake decorating equipment. So what I've got here is I've got an angle spatula, I've got some different types of cake scrapers, some sprinkles, a spring form cake tin. So this cake tin is really nice and versatile because you can bake cakes in it as well as make, you know, cheesecakes or mousses in it as well. And then I've also got a turntable here to make your cake decorating a whole lot easier. Now, all you need to do to enter is ask the adult who's helping you out to subscribe to my YouTube channel and send me a photo of the cake that you made along with the answers to the questions that I dropped throughout this video to either my Instagram or my Facebook DMs and I'll be announcing the winner on Monday at 6 p.m. on my different social media channels. Also, if you're not a chocolate cake fan or if I use some ingredients today that you may be allergic to, then simply bake whichever other cake flavor that you like. Send me a photo of that along with the answers to the questions in this video and you can still go in the draw to win. Apart from that, stay safe and happy baking.